Welcome back everyone. So today I'll be doing a review of the Vocal Mantra M6. First, before I get started, quick disclaimer, I am in no way associated with Vocal or any of the skis I'm going to discuss in this review. I bought it with my own money. All of this stuff I buy with my own money. It's something that I use on a regular basis. So no affiliation. I don't make any money from this. It's really just pure reviews of what I think would be helpful for you. I'm really excited to do this review because I've been thinking about it for a long time. I've gone through many different skis trying to find the perfect ski for me, for what I like to do. In many ways, this is the ski for me, although I'm not 100% satisfied. And I want to talk to you about that. If you're considering buying the M6, I want to talk to you about my experience with the M6, why you may or may not like it and hopefully help you on your journey to having a really good time on the ski hill. So first of all, why did I buy the Vocal Mantra M6? Well, I first bought the M5. That was my history with the Vocal family and my history actually with the Mantra. So the reason I bought the Mantra M5 is because I live on the west coast of Canada. We have very wet snow. Our snow conditions are typically on an average day going to be groomers with the icy conditions, maybe some corduroy if I'm lucky, lumps and bumps and all sorts of nasty. So if you go into the interior a little bit of British Columbia, you're going to have more kind of champagne snow, lighter snow, more fun snow. But where I am in Vancouver, I ski a lot of the local mountains and then I also ski Whistler Black Home, uh, which is about two hours away from me. But the snow in general, is going to be more wet and more icy. And I don't mind that because for me, I'm typically about, a, I would say an intermediate skier. I'm not an expert or anything like that. Uh, my son took me on a double black diamond once and I almost had a heart attack. So I am not a super advanced skier. I like groomers, I like blue runs. I like to go fast, but I'm not a super technical skier. This sort of ski for me, an all mountain ski that I can do a lot of different things with, was really attractive. Historically, I did a lot of alpine touring, and so I traded in all my touring gear to strictly buy some downhill equipment, and, and this is what I went with. My other options that I was looking at was the Blizzard family. I do like some of their products. I was looking at many different skis that they have, including the Cochise, the Brahma, and the Rustler. I think those are all interesting skis, all very different. So the M5 was a great ski for me. I really enjoyed it when I first got it almost killed me, but in a good way. I loved the feeling, but it took me a long time to get used to it. It really felt like you were on tracks when you were going down the ski hill. If you like to charge hard down the hill, I like to do that. I don't usually do it on black diamonds and things like that, but on a blue run where I have visibility, I really like to try to go as fast as I can and do those really nice, beautiful carving turns. I love the feel of the ski cutting into the mountain and just feeling that, that carve as I progress through the turn. That's what I really like. I don't do a lot of moguls, and so if you're looking for mogul skiing, this is probably not the ski for you. There's better skis for that, although this certainly can do that. But that feeling that I got from the M5 was just amazing. I'd never felt that before. It really felt like the, a Ferrari of skis in many ways. And I, I think that's what most people get from the M5. The downside to the M5 was it was more ski than I am skier. So as I progressed into the day, I would have a lot of energy. I would be driving the M5 until I wasn't. And the moment you're not in control of the M5, it's in control of you. And it's a lot of ski. It's, it's, I don't want to downplay that. You have to be a pretty proficient skier to be able to handle the M5, I feel. So for me, uh, like I said, I'm an intermediate skier, so the M5 was a lot to handle. I loved it, and, and I still do, but near the end of the day, I would be exhausted, and I always had to be on my game with the M5. Otherwise, it was going to take me down the hill one way or the other. Either I was in charge or it was in charge, and it's better if you are. Uh, and so, But when you were in charge, when you had the energy, when you had the legs, the M5 was awesome. Like I, I just loved it. So that gets me into the M6. And sorry to go over the M5 so much, but you're gonna see why in a moment. So the M6, pretty big improvements to the M6, or so their website says, and that's what got me excited, was they did this cool little honeycomb thing up here. I think this is carbon fiber. Go check it on their website. Doesn't really matter to me. What really matters is how much better is it? 
what's the difference? So for me, when I put this on at the beginning of the season, comparing it to the M5, the difference was substantial. And it wasn't all good. So the first thing I noticed was it felt lighter, maybe a little more flexible. Although when you look at the stats, the stats are pretty consistent. I think there's not a huge change in flexibility. I think it's a little bit lighter. I think the turn radius is a little bit better. The rocker is the biggest difference. And I don't really notice that uh, so much. And maybe I do in different areas, but to me it doesn't scream change in rocker. So you probably won't notice it. Maybe you will. I didn't notice it. What I did notice was it feels shorter. So when I'm skiing, there's a big, there's a lot of changes when I'm skiing now. So for one, this is a much easier ski to ski with, for sure. I would say it feels more like a rustler than a Brahma, if you're familiar with Blizzard family. And so, yeah, it's not the M5, that's for sure. It's not this, you know, strap on and the rocket ship is leaving. It's not that. It's not you're on rails anymore and the turn is gonna feel like something from outer space. It's not that anymore. So this is a much more playful ski. It's an easier ski. This ski does not kill me. So, whereas the M5, I was tired around 1 p.m. I can ski all day with this, and I'm not tired at all. My legs will slowly fatigue, just like you would with any sort of ski. However, I don't feel like I'm doing the work that I did with the M5. That's good, but also, to me, I kind of miss the power of the M5, right? And it makes me wonder, maybe I want to try a Brahma or something like that to see how that compares to this. If you've done that, I'd love to hear from you on that comparison. But I sort of miss the M5 in some ways. I've spoke to many people on the hill who love the M5, but it's too much ski for them. They went to this, they like it a lot more. So there definitely is that. There's the difference, right? This is a more playful ski, an easier ski in some ways. It retains a lot of the qualities of the Mantra M5, but not all of them, right? So if you're looking for that hard charging feel where you're locked in and you're just going to cut through the mountain, especially if it's corduroy or icy, yes, but not to the extent of the M5, for sure, right? It, it's you're, you're getting rid of some of the hard things about the M5, the, the, um, the way that it, it performs. It's a lot of work but it performs and you're you're kind of tweaking it to be easier but not as good performance i would say in some regards now you can debate with me on that for sure i think that's a worthwhile debate but that's the feeling i get i kind of feel like it's you you can play with this ski easier but you're going to miss out on some of the aspects of the m5 and i think that's the feels like i want to say stiffness but I know it's not stiffness, it's it's something else. So you're gonna pay about 800 Canadian, maybe about 600 US for this ski. Pretty similar to the M5, the M5 is probably on sale now, uh, could be cheaper. So if you're looking at the two skis and you like the stiffer, harder charger ski, I would say the M5 could be a pretty good deal for you if it's a lot cheaper than this one. If I was to do this all over again and the M5 was a lot cheaper, I might just stick with that. It depends on your style of skiing and what you're looking for, of course. So who would want this ski, the M6? I think anyone who likes the M5, but wants something a little bit easier, then definitely. Also, somebody who likes the M5, but wants that next evolutionary step. And I think this is, in many ways, an improvement on the M5, and it does retain a lot of the qualities. So that torsional stiffness that the M5 screams you do have in this, right? So it's not like it's a totally different ski. It's not the Rustler, right? You have zero chat going on in here. So if you ski some of those, uh, like the Elon Ripstick or the Rustler and things like that, in icy conditions, when you're screaming down the hill, you have chatter going on, right? This does not. So like the M5, it's like the Stealth Bomber, right? You, do, you have no chatter, like it's locked in. Railroad tracks, right? That's what I love about these skis, the Mantra, is that you can basically go through anything. It's bomb-proof, no chatter. You can do your hockey stop, and, and it's like consistent, just so smooth. So that's retained. So if you like that, then I would recommend this. If you like edge grip, if edge grip is what you're going for, probably for those icy conditions, you want to do those beautiful turns, those carves into the mountain, then I would say, yeah, this is probably for you too. I don't know of a better ski probably 
for that than this. So uh, there's a lot of debate on the internet about that, but a lot of people end up coming back to the mantra for that. So if you're looking for turn radius, then you're going to get a little bit better from the M6 than the M5. So if that's really what you're looking for, and I know that is a sensitive topic with some people, if they wanna get a shorter turn radius, then I would say go with this, right? Or at least try it out. The M5 is wonderful, many things I love about it. The feel, I kinda like the feel even more than the M6. However, this is easier. The turn radius is shorter, uh, not by a huge amount, but by a noticeable amount. So I would say if you're, that's a factor for you, I would look at the M6. If you're kind of thinking about a playful ski as opposed to a hard charger, and your line is kind of leaning a little bit more towards the playfulness, this is for you hands down, right? Hard charging, M5. Playfulness with uh, an element of hard charging, M6 for sure, right? It's not like you can't go blasting down the hill and do beautiful turns with these, with the M6. I would suggest maybe a little bit longer than you went with on the M5. For me, anyway, I don't know what it is, but maybe it's just the, the ease of skiing makes me feel like I need a longer turn, especially as I come out of the turn. It feels like I'm, I'm just, it's not locking in like the M5 did. If the M5 just destroys you during the day, like it did me, I mean, I knew that my ski day was going to end around one or two o'clock if I started at 8 a.m and my legs would just get tired. For a multi-day trip, that is tough to sustain, right? So if that is a factor for you, M6 for sure, right? And so that is one of the things that I, I shouldn't overlook. For multi-day trips or multi-day skiing, multiple days of skiing in a row, the M6 actually is gonna be really nice. And I think I'm getting most of what I got from the M5. However, it's not destroying me. So. I can't overlook that, that is such a huge deal. So think about those factors when you're looking for a ski. I think you're all gonna have different user cases. For me, I am glad I went with the M6. I'm still debating which one I like the most. In many ways, I like the M5. So if you've got the M5 and you don't wanna lose some of those hard charging qualities, some of those you know feelings of just being locked in and that satisfying carve, then I would resist the M6. However, if you're tired of being exhausted by the end of the day, then the M6 could definitely be for you. So I'm no longer a young teenager, I think for me, I get tired faster and I wanna do multiple days in a row. So as I talk through this with you, I'm kinda of thinking the M6 was not a bad move for me. Now, if you don't wanna lock into the vocal family of skis, but you like the mantra, there's some options for you out there. There's of course Blizzard, and I think that if I didn't have the vocal mantra, I would definitely be in the Blizzard family. They've got the Brahma, the Cochise. Those are all excellent skis, highly recommended. I think depending on your ski style and what you wanna do, one of those could be satisfactory for you. Also the Nordica Enforcer is a competitor to this ski as well when you're looking at all mountain skis. I think that's something you could look at as well. I didn't go with that. I would probably go with Blizzard before I went with Nordica, but that's just personal preference for me and the way that I ski. So that's it. So hopefully this was helpful for you. If you've skied either the Mantra M5 or the Mantra M6, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, do all that stuff. I appreciate it, it really helps my channel. All right, that's it, happy trails. Hey, thanks for watching till the end. Please give me a thumbs up if you found this video helpful. It really helps the channel and it also allows me to know what reviews you find helpful. If these reviews help you to find the right product, then please think about subscribing to make sure you don't miss any helpful content in the future. Meanwhile, please feel free to comment down below on what reviews you think I should do next. I read all the comments and I try to reply to most of them. I really appreciate your input and I look forward to chatting with you. Thanks a lot.